there's this idea of mastery learning, which is right. arguably the oldest way of learning, that uh, before you move on to a more advanced concept, you really learn the more basic one. But in a traditional school system, the one most of us grew up in, that's not the way it works. We all kind of get moved at a set pace. If I got an 80% on an exam, even though I didn't know 20%, we're moved on to the next concept, probably something that's more advanced. You know, teachers every day tell us that, look, I, I'm teaching seventh grade, but I see from the test scores that half of my kids are operating at a fifth or sixth grade level. The other ones are operating at a ninth grade level. What do I do? And so what, what mastery learning is the idea of, well, no, just let every student work on what's appropriate for them, fill in gaps that's appropriate. And you know, we could have talked about this 20 or 30 years ago, but it, it was like, how does one teacher cater to individual needs of right. 30 students? I mean, outside of a one-room school room. Outside of a yeah, one-room schoolhouse so or a personal we've tutor. We've talked about this before. How yeah. do you get the student, this works spectacularly for the student that um, is incentivized and motivated to do it. Yes. But for the student that isn't, how do you get them involved? Well, I, I think that's where the classroom, the community, and the teacher is, is key. We do have students, you know, we, there's a young girl in Afghanistan who self-educated herself right. on Khan Academy and it's is amazing. Now doing physics research at MIT, but that's unusual motivation. But, you, you know, in a, in a mainstream classroom, we find that all kids are more engaged in a, in a, in a framework where they're allowed to work on what, what's appropriate for them. And we've all sat in classes. Most of the time, you're, you're kind of lost or you're, you're bored. And, and teachers know it. They have to teach to a middle. And here, they're more engaged. Speak to the online education writ large. When I first met you, we used to have conversations about how we all thought education was going to move so quickly in this new direction where you'd have you know, one famous teacher teaching uh, you know, students all over the world. Uh, universities were going to change. High schools were going to change. It hasn't changed as fast. It, in, in some ways it hasn't. In some ways it has. Like, the, the thing that I've been impressed by is how much technology has gotten into classrooms. And I think the first wave of technology was a little bit you know, people did it just for technology's sake, and there's these famous cases of you know tons of iPads being bought, and no one ever uses them, and things like that. But now you are starting to see mainstream big districts say, "All right, we see in the test scores that our our kids, even though if they're all 13, there there's a spread of four grade levels. Right. We need to do something to remediate that." And so, you know, four or five years ago, when I used to talk about personalized learning and mastery learning, it was kind of this avant-garde thing for for a lot of districts. But now they're, they're right. asking us, like, hey, I th we think Khan Academy is what right. we should be using. But what, how does that, that work? If a, if a teacher is going to use it in the classroom, they put some of the kids on Khan Academy programs and say, you do this while I'm teaching this over here? Or is that yeah, homework? I, or how? Like, what we're saying is that at least one class period a week. And, and we're, seeing, we're, we're seeing that's like a good dosage um, or maybe a minimum dosage. There's some good efficacy studies. There's a district down in Philadelphia, right. Centennial, that saw if the kids do 30 minutes a week of what's appropriate for them individually. They're mm -hmm. seeing 30% more gain than, than expected, wow. and we're seeing similar studies in Brazil and Guatemala, all, all over the world. And so what we're, we're telling teachers and districts is, you know, do, do what you're used to doing, uh, but give at least one class period or assign homework for 30 minutes a week where students can work on remediating gaps that they need or moving ahead if necessary. And the teacher identifies that and says, here's your here's the, the, the course you should be watching. The, the, the teacher can say, hey, why don't you start here? It can be informed by test scores. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times, you know, when I just meet family friends, I say, okay, if you're in seventh grade, just start on fifth grade and move ahead. If, and you, if can, you know you it, you'll really accelerate quickly. through that yeah. stuff.